Hi everyone, Steven here. So you don't know what a vSAN fault domain is, or better yet, you don't even know how to set one up. Well, stick around, I'm gonna cover that. See you in a bit. Thanks for sticking around everybody. So this won't be that long of a video. Uh, we're gonna talk about what a fault domain is uh, and I'll give you an example of one and we'll actually set it up, okay? Um, now, normally I like to throw this out at this point. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please support the channel by subscribing to it. I'm trying to hit that 10,000 mark. Ultimately, I'd like to get one of those YouTube plaques, but you need 100,000 for that. So we'll learn how to walk before we run. Um, also, another way to support the channel uh, is with the super thanks, totally up to you. So again, subscribing, it's free. Please do subscribe, uh, I'd appreciate it. So let's jump into it. Let me get my uh, iPad going here. So a fault domain, first of all, think of it as a failure domain. Uh, for example, if we had like three servers, if we had three servers, server one, server two, and server three, and I had a VM and I'm doing failure to tolerate equals one, uh, components would be spread across these three. If I lost that server, I'm still okay. That's kind of the idea. So this would be a fault domain, right? Um, disk groups are fault domains as well. And I've probably given examples of that in my other videos if you haven't watched my disk group stuff. So let's, now, suppose if I want to do something different, okay? So let's say I'm going to do something like this. Let's say I've got server one. Let's say I've got six servers. Now I'm going to demo this exact one. Server one, server two, server three, server four, server five, server six. So these are my vSAN servers, okay? My ESXi host, so I've got disk groups or whatever. I don't care if it's ESA, OSA, it doesn't really matter. Um, now, when I create a VM, if I create a VM here, here's my VM, and let's say I'm gonna do failure to tolerate equals one, and I'm doing mirroring, just for argument's sake. So generally you would have like component, component, maybe a witness, you generally have like three different components. So maybe a a component will go here, maybe another component will go here, maybe I'll throw maybe a witness component over here, let's say, just for argument's sake. So great, and this works perfectly fine. If I lose the server one, I'm still okay. I still have the majority of the components. I have uh, a majority quorum, a majority of votes, right? But suppose if I wanted to do something like this, suppose if I said, oh, I want servers one and two are inside a rack rack one over at the corner of the data center. Servers three and four are in another rack. Rack two at another part of the data center and servers five and six are in rack three at the other end, another end of the data center, right? And I want to have a fault domain or a failure domain of a rack. In other words, if if I drop a big anvil, I'm trying to draw an anvil here. If I drop an anvil on that rack and it gets crushed, all the servers are dead, right? Uh, so in this example, if something happened to rack one, I would lose server two and server, uh, server one and server two. Therefore, my VM would fail at that point because I had two components on that. But if I wanted to say, no, no, I, I, I want to have a fault tolerance or a failure domain at the rack level. So I want to make sure, I want to force vSAN to make sure components are spread across racks. So you see how I got one component in this rack, another component in this rack here, sorry, rack two, and another component in rack three. And now you might be asking, what are the odds of a rack failure? Like, how does a rack fail? It's a piece of metal, it's a shelf, right? Well, and again, racks, for years and years, we've got redundant power supply strips down the side. That's fine, yeah, and you got redundant power if you wire up everything correctly. If you blow a, a breaker on one end, you got, you got redundant power supplies, your server should still survive, depending on how you design this. But what happens if a rack is sitting in one part of the data center, and all of a sudden, uh, pipe starts leaking on top of that rack or the raised floor decides to collapse under it happens folks pretty rare but it can happen so you might have a requirement to make sure we have redundancy at the rack level so this is one example of where fault domains can come in so i can make sure vsan spreads the components across those racks to make sure these are rack i can withstand a complete rack failure so how do we do that so let's jump right into it 
Okay, so let's jump right into it. So right now, uh, you'll see I've got my vSAN cluster. It's the original storage architecture. It's just what I had. Doesn't really matter. You'll see I got six servers here. Great. Uh, I'm going to create a virtual. I've been doing some work over here on something else. My next series in, uh, will be on performance stuff. So I've been creating some Windows VMs. Anyways, enough of that. Uh, if I right click on this and I create a VM, um, again, it could spread those components across any of those servers. I'm not going to bother demoing that. You've seen that done a million times, right? So let's go in and create our fault domains. So I'm going to select the cluster. I'm going to go to configure. I'm going to scroll all the way down to vSAN fault domains. And you'll see by default here, I got, I see my six servers. They are their own fault domain, okay? But like I said, I wanna maybe do this in racks. So notice if you can click on this or you can drag and drop. I'm gonna drag and drop host one into here, fault domain, I'm gonna call it rack one. Oops, rack dash one, create. I'm gonna add host two to it, come on, host host two. I'm gonna drag and drop that in there, great, move it. Let's repeat that process. Let's get host three now. Drag it into this one. This domain, we'll call it rack two. And come on. And we'll do the same thing. We'll drag and drop host four into rack two. And then we got host five and six left over right now. So let's go five, drag it into there. Rack dash three, create. And last but not least, come on. Oh, 06, we drag and drop into rack three. So you'll see here I now have, come on, three fault domains, rack one, rack two, and rack three. So imagine your data center, right? So this is just an example. You can do this like with sites too. Uh, I'll probably do a video on a stretch cluster or um, or, or, or multi-site or whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll probably do that for another video. So let's leave that alone. So great, I got my sites here, right? So let's uh, right click, create a new VM, uh, new virtual machine. Good. Next, I don't care what I call it. I'll call it test, test, VM. We go next. Whatever. I put that cluster. I'm gonna pick my default vSAN data store. Um, uh, vSAN default data store, and I'm gonna pick the, the, the vSAN data store. So the default one is failure to tolerate equals one, and it's mirroring. So I'll go next whatever next I don't care it's Windows I don't care about size whatever I'm not gonna install anything right so we wait and that is basically configured at that point I'm gonna click on test VM over here physical displacement notice now I get I got my component component witness there's my hard drive I don't have it powered on so you don't see um, uh, the uh, you do not see the uh, swap object you do see the home and you do see the hard disk but if I expand the hard disk you'll see uh, it's on host two, four, and six, just just by chance. It could have been one, one, three, and five, or whatever, right? But notice again, one component's in rack fault domain rack one, another's in fault domain rack two, the other's in fault domain rack three. And if I look down here, what we'll tells this one spread up? Okay, so this one here's slightly slightly different. One component's in rack two, host two, one's in host five, and the other one's in host. Uh, host four. Okay, so the main thing here, these three different components, the two components in the witness, are in separate fault domains. So again, if these were actually in a rack, I could crush one rack, rack one, and this thing would still be available. Um, that's pretty much it, folks. Pretty simple stuff for fault domains in vSAN. Again, you could take this one step further if you're creating a stretch cluster across sites type of thing. Okay, you would have fault domains there. All right. Um, that's it. So if I start creating VMs now, it's going to make sure that these components are in separate fault domains so we can lose that one fault domain. It will not put two components in the same fault domain. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you found this interesting or, uh, or whatever, just hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd really appreciate you subscribe to the channel. It does support the channel. Uh, leave comments and questions below. Uh, if you want to see something, Please leave, uh, uh, please leave that below. I, I get back to all my uh, um, questions and comments and I'll, whatever you request, I'll see what I can do. I, I'm very limited on resources, but uh, I've got a long list of stuff that I will be making up. Thanks again, folks. Have a great day. Bye now.